Now, investigators are hoping that video from that music festival tragedy helps them piece together exactly what went wrong. MSNBC anchor Lindsay Reiser joins us now with a minute-by-minute -minute breakdown. Lindsay, help us understand what happened here. Walk us through some of these videos we're seeing. Yeah, it really is incredible. And right now, we know that while a ton of evidence needs to be gathered, while facts need to be pieced together, including how many people were in the venue at yeah. the time, these videos really are giving us the closest glimpse we have yet into what happened. From the moment the doors to Astroworld opened, there was chaos at NRG Park. At 2 p.m., a stampede of concert goers exploded through security gates, with dozens being trampled in the process. As the clock ticked down to Travis Scott's arrival, tens of thousands of fans crammed into the venue to see the rap star perform. Where your feet were placed is where your feet stayed the whole night. Concert goers told NBC News that around 8.30 p.m., the crowd began to compress and push, making moving, even breathing difficult. Five, four, three, two, as soon as that countdown went to zero, it was just my, my rib cage was so squished that I couldn't expand my chest, expand my lungs to catch a breath. Just after 9 p.m., Travis Scott took the stage and the atmosphere in the venue ignited, electrifying an already feverish mob of fans. According to a video analysis by NBC News, by 9.12 p.m., people in the crowd could be heard screaming for help. Houston police say they first received reports of people falling injured around 9.30 p.m. It was around that exact time when Travis Scott briefly paused the show after noticing an ambulance. An ambulance in the crowd. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Moments later, he asked fans to put a middle finger up to the sky if they were okay. If everybody goes to a middle finger up to the sky. Seconds after, a video was taken of 18-year-old Aiden Cruz trying to notify a camera operator of the dangers taking place in the pit. <laughs> Twenty-year-old Cynthia Lira found herself at the bottom of a pile of people, and felt she wasn't going to make it out alive. At first, I was like, "Help, help! I, I can't get up." And then when people started coming up to me, I was just like, "I can't breathe! I can't breathe!" I kept screaming, "Like help, help! Like I'm gonna die in here." At one point, Lira says she found herself holding the hand of another stranger trapped in the pile, both silently accepting what felt like an inevitable fate. It just felt like we were like in that together, like. It was such a tragedy, like it shouldn't have happened in the first place, but well, we were stuck in a situation, we couldn't do anything, so we were just like, okay, like, I guess. At 9.32 p.m., a young woman is seen attempting to alert the same camera operator. She steps in front of the camera, but the concert continues. By 9.38 p.m., a mass casualty event has been declared, and Live Nation agrees to cut the show short. Three minutes later, security officials are seen running through the pit. At 9.42 p.m., Travis Scott pauses the concert midway through a song and asks security to help someone who's gone unconscious. At almost the exact same time, part of the crowd can be heard chanting, Stop the show! As a member of the security team alerts the staff to multiple people without pulses. At 9.46 p.m., members of the Houston Police Department can be seen in the pit. By 9.54 p.m., Drake has taken the stage, and a number of concert goers are seen standing on top of an emergency vehicle. At 10.11 p.m., Travis Scott finishes his set, and the concert ends, more than 30 minutes after a mass casualty event was declared. Eight people in the crowd died that night, their ages ranging from 14 to 27. In statements to the public, NRG Park and Live Nation both said they're working closely with authorities as they work to investigate the situation. Travis Scott took to Instagram to express his condolences for the lives lost. I could just never imagine the severity of the situation. Across social media, survivors continue to share their stories, raising awareness and hoping for change. I really hope that my story and my word will help to put guidelines and prevention so like this will never happen again. Again, it should have never happened in the first place. See, these user videos really do put into perspective how awful a situation this is in a way that you don't get just sort of reading and, and hearing some things. I do have to wonder, though, I mean, you mentioned that there were two pauses, at least, in the show. 
Any more explanation, understanding as to why the concert wasn't stopped after that mass casualty? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the big question, right? And Houston Fire Chief Samuel Pena was on with today's Savannah Guthrie this morning. And essentially, he said, look, we don't know right now exactly what Travis Scott knew. There's no evidence here um, that he encouraged people to rush the stage. We did see he stopped the show a few times, but it still took, like we saw, another 30 minutes yeah. for the music to stop completely. Um, of course, uh, Travis Scott, he, he took to social media, we saw, to express express his condolences. His girlfriend, Kylie Jenner, also took to social media to do the same. She said they had no idea there were any fatalities until after the show. Wow. There's going to be a lot more to come from this story, obviously. Lindsay Reiser, we appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.